Who would have expected two dry, warm, sunny days here in Cleveland in February? But we figured we'd take advantage. We've got this absolutely awesome 69 Oldsmobile Hearst Olds. I can't remember the last time I've been as excited about a car as I am about this, and I'm not even an Oldsmobile guy. It's got a fantastic frame-off restoration, heavily documented, and the most cool thing about this is that this is serial number one, the first 1969 Hearst Olds built in 1969. Even George Hearst's personal car was serial number three. And all of this is documented with paperwork, receipts, invoices, everything that makes this car special. The Hearst Olds were kind of Oldsmobile's way of doing an end run around General Motors 400 cubic inch limit. And as you can see, this ain't no 400 cubic inch car. Working with the Hearst Corporation and Demer Engineering, the Oldsmobile guys managed to sneak out one of the nastiest muscle cars of the era doing an end run around the rules and creating just a flat out badass car. Let's take a ride. Here we are inside the Hearst Olds. Fairly standard Oldsmobile fare with the three pods for the gauges. This one has a working tick-tock tack showing good oil pressure, good temperature, although you know, those are probably not much more than warning lights. This car has every available option, power windows, working air conditioning, AM, FM radio, and it's just awesome sitting here looking out over that gigantic hood scoop out there that the Olds guys affectionately call the mailbox. Let's take a ride. Drop the traditional Hearst, his and Hearst shifter into gear. And by the way, that's guaranteed for life and Mr. Gasket will still honor the guarantee on these shifters. Also got the traditional Oldsmobile transmission sound, which I like a lot. And this was an upscale car. This was very expensive compared to a lot of its peers. This wasn't just your average race car Chevelle. So it's quiet. There are a couple creaks in here, which is just the upholstery moving against itself, but the body is very tight. Lots of sound deadening. The engine is almost silent. Unless, of course, you lean on it a little bit. And ride quality is excellent. I think it's probably tuned a little softer than its Chevelle and GTO stable mates to give it more of a luxury car ride, because it is an old. This one is sitting on correct reproduction Goodyear polyglass bias ply tire, so there's a little bit of a ride trade-off there. It's not quite as smooth and effortless as a set of radials would be, but for the look, you can't beat it. And there's just effortless torque, 500 pound-feet, 380 horsepower, 500 pounds of torque, just makes this thing a lot of fun on the road. Cruising along here at about 50 and it's just easy, easy. Power front disc brakes, of course. And just Oh, about half throttle, and man, this thing just catapults itself forward. As I mentioned, this is serial number one, built by Demer Engineering up in Lansing. And even though Hearst was contracted to build these cars, they were subbed it out to Demmer. Coincidentally, their factory was right across the street from Oldsmobile's Lansing assembly plant, and that sure made it easy. This car is the first Hearst Olds, but it is the third if you look at sequential VINs. And the reason for that is that they would just 
drive a batch from Oldsmobile over to Demmer. They'd park them in the parking lot, and the guys at Demmer would just go out in the parking lot and grab one whenever they needed another one to convert. This just happened to be the very first one they grabbed. Some of the modifications they made were uh, the hood scoop, of course, the paint, the tape stripes, and it's interesting to note that the same guy pinstriped all the cars. 68, 69, the same guy hand pinstriped everything. It's kind of a cool little bit of continuity. The 69 cars also had a slightly different engine. Um, I always thought that they delivered them with one engine and they swapped it out, but no, General Motors did the engineering on the 455, and it was delivered to Demmer with the 455 already installed, and that was for certification reasons and to make the VIN read correctly. So they sort of broke the rules, but they played by the rules, but General Motors let them do it. And the result is a very factory feeling, tight, finished car that was considerably more powerful than anything else you could get in an A-body that year. I mean, you lean on it, and it just... God, so much torque. Turbo 400, three-speed automatic was the only choice in the Hurst Oldsmobiles, and of course, they all came with the Hurst dual-gate shifter. They did have a unique camshaft that they installed, a unique intake manifold, which is virtually unobtainium, but this car does have the correct one-year-only cast iron intake. The hood scoops are functional. It's the original steel hood, and they bolted that fiberglass scoop on and cut a pretty crude-looking hole in the hood to feed the air cleaner underneath. There's a vacuum valve on top of the air cleaner that was cribbed from a Ford Cobra Jet air cleaner. Uh, I find that very amusing. But it works. You can hear it snap open and close. And man, is this a nice car to drive. Rides nice, steers well. That engine just feels like it could leap over a building. It does have power windows, all of which are operational. It does have factory air, which blows cold. It does have an AM, FM radio, which works. And it's got a few upscale touches. I like the texturing on the door panels and seats. Black was the only choice available, of course, but they did a few nice little things, including the stripe on the headrest to match the uh, gold stripes on the outside of the car. You also get kind of a fake looking, not even remotely convincing burled walnut with Hearst Olds emblems on the dash. This car was apparently never registered by its original owner. You got a card with your new Hearst Olds and you could mail that in and they would assign you a number and give you a plate that you could affix to the dashboard. This car does not have that, so I would guess of the roughly 540 people who did register their cars, this first owner was not one of them. Being serial number one, I have to imagine that this was probably an executive car. Either someone at Old, someone at General Motors, someone at Hearst got their hands on it, rather than it just going out into the general public. Definitely got a little lope to it. There's a cam in there working away. It's not idling like your father's Oldsmobile. Oh boy, is this sucker smooth. Snapping off decent shifts, not too harsh. A lot of fun to drive this car. 
And in 1969, the guy who owned this car, he must have been going out every night looking for a fight because this was going to stomp some pretty serious hardware. If you could hook it up, this was a very, very fast car. Of course, you probably have to pay attention because I don't think the local constabularies would react too well. And this is not a subtle car. Despite the cameo white paint, the hood scoop, the spoiler, the stripes, all of that really gives it a genuine muscle car look. This was not a car that was going to sneak around at all. Turn signals work, indicators are both operational. I like the dual sport mirrors, one of the cooler designs of the period. I bet this thing gets eight miles per gallon if you drive it like it wants to be driven. It's very hard to keep your foot off the throttle. This is an air-conditioned car, so it has 323 gears in it. You could get, I believe, 342s or even possibly 373s with the, uh, the uh, non-air-conditioned cars. But the 323s are actually a really nice compromise. It's got enough torque to really launch itself. But it cruises nicely. You know, we're just loafing along here. It's quiet. It's comfortable. It's probably 2,800, 3,000 RPM at 60 miles an hour on the highway. So it's a much more livable car. And it doesn't feel at all high strung. And that really makes a difference when you're going to use it regularly. And I. God, I'd have a hard time not driving this car all the time. The restoration is, believe it or not, about 20 years old. I don't know how many miles it has on it since then, but it's very tight, very clean, spotless underneath. You'll be able to see full chassis pictures on our webpage at hardwoodmotors.com. And man, is this just a nice, nice car. Lots of documentation, original window sticker, original invoice, documentation from the registry showing that it is indeed serial number one. We have probably a stack of receipts two inches thick showing the restoration work. I have restoration photos. I mean, everything you need on a car like this to believe that it is everything it purports to be. As I said, I, I'm not an Oldsmobile guy, but boy, do I like this car. I apologize for the quality of our roads. Even this car's bouncing around a little bit, but it's certainly not objectionable. And I, I hate to park it. That's about all the ride I want to do today, but it's hard to stop. This thing is just a fantastic runner.